Welcome back to part four of chapter one, where we discuss the human heart. In this video, we're going to talk about cardiac electrophysiology. So not just physiology, but now we're going to talk about the electrical physiology, meaning what happens electrically within the heart to cause this conduction that we've talked about before, the depolarization that we talked about before. This lecture is going to be a little bit more intense, so get out your notepad. So take a look at this image. This is two cells in between them. You have what's called a gap junction. Gap junctions are the electrical connections between cardiac cells. These connections allow for the movement of ions from one cell to another. This is how they talk to each other. And it's how the process of conduction will work between myocytes, which is heart cells. Some cells respond faster to the ionic changes than others. So the rate or speed of conduction will vary depending on which part of the conduction system is actually triggered. So now we're going to talk about cardiac action potentials, sometimes referred to as membrane action potentials. And this is a topic that confuses a lot of people. In a normal functioning heart, it's the SA node that generates the action potential that will ultimately lead to cardiac contraction. The action potential, or again, membrane action potential, is the change in voltage across the membrane of the myocyte. So if this is the inside of the cell and this is the outside of the cell, all right, this right here is the membrane. So as ions, remember ions carry an electrical charge, as ions move outward and inward into the cell and out of the cell, that's what causes this change in the action potential. So we're going to discuss this a lot further, but it's important to know that different parts of the heart have different action potentials. So as you can see here, I know that these shapes might not mean a lot to you right now, but they will, I promise you. These are the membrane action potentials of the different areas of the heart. All right, we have a graph here, and I'm going to try to graphically represent a ventricular myocyte membrane action potential. The ventricular myocyte is the cell of the ventricles. And when you look at an EKG, most of what you see is the electrical conduction of the ventricles. So on this graph, we've put a Y axis and an X axis. So on the X axis is always going to be time. Okay. And then up and down on this Y axis is voltage. We're going to start with a voltage of about negative 90. Okay. And this is called phase four. I know it's weird. You're starting with phase four, but that, I start here because this is where our baseline is at about negative 90 millivolts. And it's at negative 90 because the cell membrane is more permeable to potassium than any other ion. And the equilibrium potential of potassium is negative 90 millivolts. Sodium leaks into the cell through gap junctions, which slowly increases the membrane's action potential until it reaches a threshold. So let's say sodium begins leaking in. Let's zoom in here. Sodium is now leaking in to this cell until it reaches that threshold. So if we got the cell down here, you have all these little channels and sodium will leak in. Sodium will leak in. Sodium is leaking in through these channels. Potassium loves being in here. Potassium's all in here. Now, once that threshold is hit, you get a rapid upstroke of cardiac membrane action potential, and it occurs after the rapid voltage-gated channels open up. And those voltage-gated channels open up right here at that threshold. So there's more channels here, more channels here where sodium is going to also rush in through those. And those are voltage gated and they open up right when we hit this threshold. And now we're going to get a steep rise, a very steep rise in our action potential. It'll go from negative 70 millivolts all the way up to about 20. So you hit about 20. And that's called phase zero. 
phase zero. Phase one is the initial phase of repolarization. So that was depolarization. Sodium going into the cell is depolarization. You're going from a very negative state to a positive state. So sodium rushing in, that's important to remember, because if you think about sodium channel blockers, they're going to slow down depolarization, right? So, because that's where sodium rushes in during depolarization. Um, so now after you hit that phase one, you begin repolarization. There is one. And you get phase two, which is the plateau phase. Phase two is this plateau phase right about here. This occurs when the inward and outward currents are equal. So you're getting a flow inward and outward of potassium and sodium. And the calcium slowly moves inward as potassium continues to move outward. So that potassium has been moving outward. And now you actually have a whole other ion, calcium, start to move inward, okay? Which causes this plateau phase right here. And the plateau phase is just due to ions, both of a negative nature and a positive ma nature moving inversely. And then phase three, you get repolarization, right back down to where we started, okay? Phase three. And that takes us back to phase four. All right. And in phase three, repolarization is the result of net outward current caused by the closure of calcium channels and the outward flow of potassium. So those calcium channels will close and then you get the flow of potassium. And then you'll get that sodium potassium pump that I talked about before, because energy is used to push potassium back into the cell and sodium back out of the cell. Because my drawing wasn't great, I put a nice clean drawing up here to give you the main movements of ion here. Obviously, depolarization is sodium moving into the cell. So if this is the cell here in this big open space, sodium moving in causes rapid depolarization. All right. And then you get this plateau phase up here when potassium is moving out and calcium is moving in. And then calcium channels close, but potassium continues to move out. Remember, potassium is positively charged, so that will still cause the action potential to go back down to negative until it hits its resting state. And then the sodium-potassium pump and everything begins again. That is a very basic understanding of membrane action potentials, but that is just about the level of understanding you're going to need to go into EKG interpretation.